Hello everybody, this is Victor here from Trend Following Trading for Beginners and here's my weekly update on my sample trading portfolio coming up next. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this week in the market is, uh, to me anyway, is uh, rather quiet until near the end of the week when uh, all the reports coming out but um, basically the con the market on Monday is just um, the dollar price continue just basically go down and um, also um, on nothing much happened then but then Tuesday alphabet basically Google um, sent out some um, report I think on Monday now something or Tuesday evening and say it is the it's doing okay uh, the advertising spend is slowing, but everything seems to be better. And um, so uh, price sort of um, can just um, going up, basically, and the market generally just going up with it. And um, it's, it's similar things for later on with the, uh, Facebook and Apple, with those kind of advertisement um, uh, stuff coming out. And then uh, Wednesday, basically, uh, uh, continuation, and then uh, Tesla comes out with uh, results. And the uh, funny thing is, um, it, it gone up initially and then tanked uh, in after hours. And apparently, uh, Elon Musk again tweets something. Well, cannot be verified yet, but he's, uh, the tweets apparently said the Tesla price is too high at the moment, I believe. Uh, it's, it's just it's just weird <laughs> why why sometimes do that, but it, it's not verified yet. He hasn't come out and said it's me or something. But but I suppose he, he got a gagging order on him, isn't it? By, by the um, regulator, a financial regulator in the US, but he still says those kind of thing. But we we'll, we will see if the uh, if the truth is true or not. Then on the on Wednesday here on the same time Wednesday, um, Starbucks and um, KFC Yum Group uh, came out with result as well. It's not doing as uh, it's not doing good obviously because of the lockdowns and stuff, and uh, both of them sort of uh, come down as well. But um, for for me anyway, I think this is a, a general trend, you know, um, people, I think overall the market uh, has been, for some reason, uh, gone up in the last three weeks or so, which I already told you guys about get ready for rebound and be careful this rebound. Um, the market in general senses is, um, I mean, good times coming back, we got a face shape now, now it looks really exactly like a face shape, you know, the six weeks or so ago it's gone down the tank and... Um, um, the market just um, really, really gone to hell, so to speak. Then um, the Fed comes in and kicks in with all this extra money and seems to be doing its job. So it did pretty well. And then obviously the last three weeks, the market just gone up and up and up and up. And uh, people think, oh, the good time's back. And I think now, is the, uh, to, to be honest, my view is um, the downturn were from the pandemic and uh, and the lockdown effect on the uh, economy economics around the world is uh, only just starting to show and uh, it's not even show yet probably because people start coming out back to work so it depends on which country you're from and the lockdown you know easing procedures you know people slowly coming out but i i think i think overall the u.s market is just uh as usual, <laughs> only tell you the good news, the bad news. Just say you know, you know, very much only short term. This is only a correction. I I don't believe that we have a twelve, ten, almost twelve year, ten, eleven years expansion in the U.S. market, which basically dragged the rest of the world coming out uh, with it. But remember, all this was done by induced by uh, loads of money being injected by. Um, by basically financial authority uh, around the world, not just US, but um, Europe, Japan, and China a bit as well, and Southeast Asia. So I'm not a bit surprised that you know the market gone up, but uh, what we all, most of us, surprised is the length of it. You know, people were normally think uh, economic expansion lasts about seven, eight years, maybe some might say six years, some might say slightly like year, but you know, this one gone about like a bit longer, 11, some would say even 12 years. So, people got used to this you know, idea, but um, overall, um, all this was 
because uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's more like sugar high. The sugar has been continuing pumping into the economic vein of the world by the you know uh, banking regulators around the world, U.S. Feds in particular. You know, putting lots of money in there. And then last time, I remember, um, I think uh, the 2018 or 2019, tried to reduce quantitative tightening. The words coming back up. You know, tried to just you know have a bit less money into into the system, so to speak. And what happened? Um, well. The U.S. market sort of slowly have a correction, not tanked, but just a correction from from you know after the event, after the fact, having a look at it, and then the Fed basically just stop. Okay, so the economy in U.S. essentially is living on sugar high. If the sugar is reduced, the economy just slows down, and um, we got Donald Trump here, basically prime himself. Oh, look at how great I did to the stock market. You know, put it up there. Ever since I'm in power, I'm so great. Uh, yes, he has done, um, you know, the tax reform and stuff, which helps, but it's sort of like one of his trick and mimics and stuff. And yes, he have uh, helped to uh, create, you know, sort of, um, I don't know, is it a false sense of uh, economic rise, but he definitely helped to push whatever the economy um, is already there, you know, up and try to up, up a notch. He definitely did that. But then... Um, which I'm going to talk a bit more later on, he seems to have lost control and then gone the other way around now. It's really funny how things turn. But anyway, back on the market, which is Thursday, um, on um, the Apple now comes out on Thursday with uh, Amazon result as well. On uh, uh, Amazon results, sort of tanks, uh, Apple gone down a little bit, not as much, but Amazon tanked mostly because um, it is saying it has to spend a lot more money on buying uh, protective equipment for his staff and try to set up a, a center of test, uh, disease testing to you know check the COVID nineteen and kind of things like that. And uh, I think the Amazon probably try to sell those kits out uh, to other people, other countries as well. So they say it's going to spend a lot of money on that. So obviously the whole thing tank. Even though a lot of people buy more stuff now online because of the lockdown. Um, it, it just the market don't like it, so it's gone down almost like two hundred, hundred ninety dollars or something, hundred eighty something, hundred ninety dollars, on uh on Friday basically. But basically that's what happened after hours on Thursday. Um, on the on the iPhone uh, Apple side, so was, I think people still be silly as far as as far as I'm concerned. Everybody still think Apple oh make its number is you know not too bad. It, Okay, iPhone sales might be bad, but you know, making up out of services and stuff. But I think it's a general general trend in the US market. Nobody really think of what happened to the lockdown, you know, people coming back out. In Europe, in UK for example, the government said they would pay three months of your salary up to twenty five hundred pounds, you know, two thousand hundred pounds. Um, if you um keep your staff, follow your staff and um Basically, at least that that is the case now. Just like any other country, especially in the U.S., I mean, it's a big country. It takes a lot of time to process those claims and stuff. So U.K. having problems as well. A lot of small company haven't been able to get the money yet. But at least the government's pledge to do that. You compare that to U.S., the only really big pledge from the government is, you know, uh, two things. Everybody get, you know, 1,200 um, check and children get about 800 or something one off and it's not con- continuous and then um, give uh, companies loans if they paid uh, used this loan to pay staff for the next two or three months or something you know uh, but most of the people are not getting those money okay at the moment so it's very much same, same to uk U- uk stuff and will those company be able to even sustain themselves and pay the staff we don't know similar problem in in, in um in UK here, but if you compare, just like the, the one-off payment, we don't do one-off payment here. We give you all this all this money for sustain for three months up to definitely two thousand five hundred pounds. From compare US only twelve hundred, you know, it's it's not it's not much, and um, the country is a lot bigger than UK, and we already have I think last Friday another almost three and a half million people out of work. So in total, last six weeks or so. One and a half months, we got 30 million people out of work, and it's been widely reported that, you know, whatever the um, 
um, job that's been created even well before Donald Trump comes into the picture. The last decade or so, the American expansion, all the jobs created are gone within the last, you know, three, four, uh, three, four weeks, so to speak, you know. And it's basically all gone, all gone down, down to pounds. And people look at this as if, you know, U.S. and recover very quickly and people will continue to spend. And look, this is iPhone. Before the pandemic, um, iPhone is slowing and that's why they're planning to buy, uh, to create a cheaper version of iPhone and sell it in India because people already seen the economic trade and economy is slowing down around the world. The trade war doesn't help. And most people, you know, they really don't have... Um, so much money to spend on a high-end phone and uh, the vast majority of people who can who can afford a phone are in the middle to low end market and apple want to chime into that which is fair enough but i mean the lockdown comes in now you know so this um the the high-end phone cost is a lot more obvious just like you know luxury goods and stuff who who in the world is going to pay or uh, want to upgrade the iPhone for a thousand dollars, a thousand pounds, or two thousand dollar pounds, whatever the high cost it is for the good up uh, top model, when they don't even have a job, having problems with putting food on the table. I mean, from from last time, two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, they they basically people then basically just you know s- stay put with the phone. So after changing the phone, they they, they won't. They will try to keep the phone or buy a second hand or something, or get, get a surface, get it fixed. Not by iPhone company, you know, Apple company themselves, but actually go third party because it will be cheaper. And um, yeah, the, um, people will still stream online, uh, mu- music and shows and stuff. Yeah, that's a given. But overall, I think, I think, I mean, the, the one thing Apple, people still have talked about, but not much from the media is telling someone's. Apple price self to be ever since Steve Jobs, the innovator of technology. It shows and lead the world in technology. Basically like, look at how they transform the the um the music industry. How how they transform the mobile phone industry. Look at iPad. Microsoft got a lot more money then, couldn't even get it working. Look at how good iPad is, you know, leading the way. And now, what do we have ever since um, uh, Mr. Jobs passing? You know, the, the wearable stuff, fine, yeah, they're probably in the pipeline before that as well. Well, Jobs, is, Steve Jobs is still around. But then now, what do we have? You know, just streaming stuff, which, uh, building on this, basically just build on existing ecosystem, what Apple provides. But where, what does it actually do now? You try to think of go to the you know, um, electric cars, you know, autonomous cars and stuff. But what what is the product? I'm seeing anything very innovative, any wow factor. And basically, I I think Apple it just continue to work on its own um, eco- um, ecology, basically ecosystem. But nothing much got to come out, and um, no new stuff got to come out. Uh, something that's hard hitting, some you know, totally change industry transformation kind of you know uh, equipment, and uh, Apple still having quite high regard. As far as I'm concerned, all these are just misplaced, and the lockdown basically make people think twice about spending high end money. I mean, Macintosh is expensive, and over here, you know, in UK, fifteen, sixteen hundred, nice display and everything else, but you know, spending that similar amount of money on a uh, uh, Intel base, Microsoft. Uh, OS based you know, laptop and things you, you don't have to pay that much you know especially basically when people have tighter financial you know you know ability they cannot you know, earn as much due to job loss or reduction in you know salary and stuff people tighten their belt and find alternatives and the high end markets always suffer same as wine same as painting same as you know Gucci bags and also things and shoes you know, difference with Apple. I mean, yeah, there will be some diehard people, you know, fans continue to buy Apple. But, you know, they buy Apple, one product here. Let's say they buy the iPhone, they have to cap out on the computer. If they buy a computer, they have to cap out on the phone, right? You only got, you know, so much up high, the same pie, just have to cut it in a different way to, you know, to to, sp- to share it to what, what they want to do. And the the reason Apple tried to go low end, uh, because that, that's a bigger market. So basically, they try to have a, um, basically higher sales, you know, to 
to keep the the explosive uh, um, growth, you know, revenue growth and all that kind of stuff. And the other thing is, Apple are still announced now say they go to continue to do some buybacks. I think of the shares. So uh, I'm not quite sure, um, but that's um, that's just how how they want to do it. Rather than have the money to do more research and do you know some development, something that really wow give us the wow factor is actually doing share buyback. Um, in a in an economy that you know people just don't have enough money to spend, and it's affecting the world worldwide, not just America or uh, Europe or China or something. But you know, we just have to wait and see. But as far as I'm concerned, the whole market has been you know gone a bit you know haywire at the moment. And then finally, obviously, the market generally gone down because you know, you know like I said the Apple's and, and Amazon views and stuff, and uh, come down as well. But I think it's also the market got. Uh, helped to go down by Donald Trump. You know, this is what I'm gonna to start to say now. Um last few weeks or so we see, you know, even the last month, you see how he changed um from, you know, very lax, relax about the pandemic, you know, and then now suddenly take charge and then blame different de- states have uh, argument with state governors about, you know, who did what, who provide what, who doesn't what. And then he come out, you know, shot himself in the feet, which I think with his arms and legs, by saying, what, disinfectants and uh, ultraviolet light on your body? Mm. And then uh, it just totally bananas. And then um, the other thing is, like you notice, uh, after the uh, disinfectants um, comments about two weeks or so ago, um, have you seen um, Dr. Fauci? I haven't seen him actually on, on, on the daily update by... Um, by Don, uh, President Donald Trump, and now Donald Trump, I think last week, says it's a waste of time to actually do a stand up every day to tell the the whole country and the world how how it's doing against um, um, the coronavirus. Waste of time. You are the leader of a country. You are supposed to provide calm and uh, good advice, um, and now you actually said it's a waste of time to talk to young countrymen. <laughs> it's very strange. I I think basic overall is he he talked too much and uh, some of his rather eccentric ideas is you know backfired and he basically just you know don't don't want to come out and but uh, again show how how he basically how how the person is. He he um, basically couldn't manipulate the mark um, the uh, media and then basically just you know say some silly things and now got somebody else you know catch do the reporting and stuff like that. And um, it's just quite strange as far as I'm concerned. And finally, of course, uh, President Trump uh, last week or two suddenly said, oh, China is to blame, blah, blah, blah. They need to pay big time, blah, blah, blah. And UK government seems to think so. Uh, uh, talking similar line, you know, not as prominent coming out like US saying you know, China need to pay, but it's basically implicate, in, implying, you know, uh, uh, after the event, after all the coronavirus died down, the relationship between UK and China will be much much different. Yeah, of course, on the on the virus side, on the disease side, you have to be careful. And um, people keep on t- saying China is not forthcoming information. Come on, mate! It is a communist party, communist based country, and has been known not to give right level information to the outside world. And it's known for years, not something new. So what the hell Europeans and American government do? Oh, take it on the face while it's good. You remember what Donald Trump has, you know, changed from January to, to now? Oh, um, what do you call, we only have five cases or something back in January. Um, it, it will blow over. We are a strong country. We've got, we got good medical, you know, cover everything else. And it, later on, he also transpired to say, "What? Well, um, when the weather become hotter, you know, the the flowers just magically vanish. Is it? Well, China is quite hot, isn't it? So is Malaysia and Singapore. Did it vanish? And now it's in India. Much hotter, I believe, than U.S. and Europe. Has it vanished? No. And then slowly go turn around and then say, "Oh, um, China, we." Um, 
President Donald Trump talked to President Xi, oh, China is doing well, uh, is doing what they can, sharing information, helping others understand the virus. Uh, we have good relationship. It's doing really well. You know, doing a good job. I think that was back in February or something. And now April now comes around, it's just totally turned hundred eighty degrees. See how bad China is. How bad who is? Who is in the pocket of China? Oh, is it? And why? Why? When people point out how bad he's, you know, have advice about you know coronavirus and how he handled the whole situation, you know, he tried to defend himself so much, like more more like want to have a go at the reporter. It's not measured when he give out um, um, his views, you know, his reports, and you know, when he delivered the reports and stuff in the White House, yeah, a, a daily conference, day, daily you know re- reports and stuff meeting, and. And then to actually now say China must pay, well, I, I said in the previous podcast, where is American going to pay for the damage they've done two thousand seven, two thousand eight? Hmm. The subprime market, bonds and stuff wrap around. I mean, this like the big shots, you know, the film. It's 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 true, wrapping around some misguided low level crap. And then wrap it around with gold dust, and then sell it to around the world to Europe to the Asian country. Hey, so I think the American government should pay too, in my view. Not just the banks, the regulator. Where the hell are they? I mean, ask yourself some simple question, just like what the big short films say. Did anybody go to the jail? Go to jail? You know, just in America itself, we spend you know and everything done and dusted. The film claim, I don't know if this is true or not, five trillion US dollars was wiped out from shares, from uh loss of jobs, you know, economic activities and pension funds and so forth. Five trillion, then that's just US alone with millions, you know, hundred thousand, I'm not I'm not sure about millions, but quite a lot of number of job losses. What about Euro? What about Asia? Should US pay? I think so. If if US want China to pay. And I think the African countries also say the uh, U.S. should pay for all, the, so is China, as U.S. to pay for what? Slaveries? There's a lot of slaveries going on in back in old days, isn't it? Shouldn't U.S. pay those two? If you want to go this way. And then on a slightly different note now, you know, if, if you're going to blame China with all this stuff, you think China just got to sit down and just take it? it I mean, in, in Asia, people have been talking about the boxer, you know, war last last time, 120 years or so ago, you know, uh, missionaries, uh, sorry, uh, those people in religions actually, you know, got killed quite a bit in, in China because China a bit, you know, worry about foreigners and, you know, um, kill quite a bit of, uh, of foreigners. In internally, and then um, other politics all comes along, all comes around, and then the, obviously the uh, American as well as other other um, uh, countries, you know, formed uh, army and then go into China to save its own people. But then at the end, what did they also do? They go into Beijing, they go into the Forbidden City, ransack the place, burn down in some of the uh, palaces. You know, I'm forcing China to pay it out loads and loads of money. Afterwards, you know, in the old days, 120 odd years ago, it's not U.S. dollars and stuff. It's gold and silver, actual gold and silver. That's what Chinese used at the time. You know, forcing China to do things like that. Um, I'm not saying China have no, you know, no fault on that one, but you know, people, uh, countries will use excuses. You know, when when there's means and just try to you know, get to the others, uh, people with lesser means and lesser capability and try to extract values, land, people, uh, money, you know, a- anything, so to speak. And and uh, I just think it's, it's kind of sad that, I mean, uh, it happened. And then if um, 120 years later now in Asia, people's worries that this year, I think it's, yeah, about 120 years ago, um, they worry, you know, the same little things happen, you know, with America and uh, in, you know, a smaller degree, UK, voicing concern also is uh, some European, I think German newspaper calling China should pay. 
and and so forth. And would they again set up a, a an army, you know, an ally coming in to, you know, bomb China? Possibly not as you know, using soldiers, airplanes, bombs and stuff, but most likely economics, you know, uh, using financial means coming in. But China is no longer a uh, a weak link, so to speak, and globalization, you know, has benefited, benefited greatly to Europeans as well as Americans, basically the West. The Asian country also benefited, you know, the living standard gone up because it got a lot more work to do, and the uh, European countries, American countries got, you know, um, the westernized country got a lot more, you know, stuff for the buck, so to speak, you know. And the living standards sort of maintain, and they have to pay, you know, even better, better, and they pay much less. But on the other hand, China and Southeast Asia suffers a lot uh, on the environmental side. You know, the Chinese, the Asians, um, the Malaysians as well. You know, all, all the, um, the the Indians they worry about what no food on the table to feed themselves, right? So they accept all this work, knowing they they're not silly people. I think they know the environmental implication, but to them, what what comes first, you know, to stay alive or to worry about the environment. So they took the hard choice. Now Europeans and Western world already done that, understand that, and Americans understand that as well. That's why they got all these regulations and stuff into the put into the law, and for the same type of company, say textile or waste management or whatever, you know, costs a lot more money to recycle, you know, and and, and basically produce a a product. So they move it to Southeast Asia. China got to know how bad it is, you know, it can affect the rivers when they manufacture things, you know. And um, also, (laughs) they don't quite know, understand this environment and those things. They learn all this from 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 Western world. Um, They put money first, you know, survival first. And the economy, you know, yes, boomed. But um, if you have ever been into China, you know, the environment has been in a, in a dire strait. It's not great. Okay, and look at the rubbish. The Western world produced so much rubbish, they couldn't handle it. What did they do? They ship it to Asia. China initially, and China just couldn't handle it. All these uh, environmental problems they have. And they ship it to Malaysia and to uh, Philippines. Now they're shipping back. You know, there's some some of it's on BBC News. But anybody actually say big things, you know, in the government say environmental damage and stuff? No, they more worry about blaming China. Blame, 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 blame. You know, sometimes I look at it more like a kid's show. This is supposed to be a doubt, right? But you also see the power play here. Donald Trump couldn't divert people's attention from the mismanagement of the virus or the coronavirus by his own hand and now because also uh, this year um, is a election year he now tried to just ramp up people attention to hating China you know get people to get American first you know that kind of feeling to say we need a job back we need China to pay for all the debts and stuff and um, have they actually think hard what the consequences at the ending point, actually said, you know, China has been helping America, especially 2007, 2008. After that, to what? The economic expansion, yeah. A lot of money from US, from the rest. But China has been buying loads of stuff, helping to keep safeguard all the jobs in Europe and in America. All this gone now. Suddenly you don't talk about them anymore. China is bad. You know, it's just like, this is what you call politics. I hate politicians because of that. You know, they selectively tell you one thing and blame somebody else. And they never own up. And especially also as well. Just like um, Iraq. All right. And Iran. January. U.S. military, uh, the government, Donald Trump was always said definitely. Killed some Ira- Iranian um, high official, military official. And say they are bad, evil. They're plotting something against U.S. U.S. people. What is the proof? Show us the proof. Nothing. Okay, and now 
you got to say something similar to China. Say they are bad. You're using the virus. They didn't. They they created a virus. They spread it around and didn't tell us enough information. Cause so much death around the world. China has to pay. And given the, also back in the uh, uh, Iraq War, I mean the you know the, the film that the the Green Zone or something, you know American as well as UK government went into Iraq against United Nations and said you know there is a weapon of mass destruction and found nothing. They destroyed the country. Okay, Saddam was saying it's not very good to his own people, but you know, let the Iraqi do his own stuff. We all have to go through our growing pain. But why did they go in there? Oil, even though they say it's not about oil. You know, there's so many people slaughtering each other in um, Africa countries, some of the states in there, downfall and stuff. The American got in there with the British, stop killing. No. Have they ever sent any uh, armies going to North Korea? Nah. But the Iraq, it, it did. Okay, but also that is based on a lie. So they can use it. You can see that, you know, they can use this lie and propagate it to using on China case and have war with China. Yeah. It's quite easy. Politician. And what does that mean? Behind it, all this rhetoric. And also Iran, I think two or three weeks ago, say any Iranian boat with guns or whatever has come close to to U.S. Uh, boats or something, the U.S. military around there, can just shoot them all down. And now more rhetoric to, against China. What does that do to the oil price? Behind the scene, the oil price, you know, I, I was tracking and looking at it, gone down to low 14 and then all this rhetoric coming out the last couple of days, boom, up to $20. Ah, the U.S. government, in this case Donald Trump, is trying to save his own oil industry. Fair enough, but nobody's using oil because everybody, more or less, is you know a third of the world's population is some in some kind of lockdown. International traveling is non-existent, is hardly anything, basically non-existent. I mean, down ninety percent or something. People are not driving within their own country, respective countries. There are only boats running around, cruise ships and stuff. So the demand for oil is still there. There's some demand for it, but it's just drastically reduced. Until the lockdown normalizes, you know, it's going to be better release, eased, and then people slowly start coming out from the woodwork and going back into the works and normal social activity come back to, uh, to life. But that would take years, you know, at least 12 months. It's not going to happen right away, and the crude oil price just continue to go down. That means what to sell gas in oil industry in America, loads of bankruptcy, and then what are they have all issue a lot of high yield bonds. The bonds will be you know gone to junks, status, and American uh, U.S. Fed basically just on buying those. I mean, how long can they keep it up? It's like you know they they people talk about um, in old days that. Um, the Japanese government holding up zombie banks because they, the the banks got so many bad loans they lend it out to uh, buying properties and stuff. And it would be similar things to American government holding up shale gas industry, you know, a lot of which are loss-making. How, how long did the U.S. government continue to give our money? You know, it's, it's worthwhile to ask. But then the, the point here is the shale gas, you know, the, the oil has suddenly gone up. The consequences, you know. Again, politician playing tricks. Just blame China. Blame, blame, blame. And um, I think there's um, some conspiracy theories running around talking about, um, I think it's Dr. Butler or something. Um, he said, from his understanding, that the U.S. was uh, cultivating viruses, you know, creating some biological germs to see if they, you know, if they can mix them together, make it, and then how, how to how to defend them and stuff. But it's like playing a dangerous game. I mean, underneath all this is masking to basically saying it's American government, it's one way or another, it's authorized 
one way or another by the government and uh, yeah, using its um, scientists and departments to try to cultivate some rather badass viruses. Okay, and I think um, from what Dr. Butler is saying, basically the U.S. doctors got to know about it. You know, get a petition of it, and basically strongly suggest don't have those kind of uh, of uh, experimentation at all. And apparently, Dr. Fauci was uh, leading at the time, and what happened? Uh, apparently, the U.S. Uh, okay, coming with a rule to say you're not allowed to do this on on U.S. soil. And whole thing got, you know, transported to China. And China wants to know about all this stuff too. And there's money in it. Why not? And gone to China. That's why I think maybe, you know, Donald Trump said they got evidence that it's from China. But where is it originating from? U.S. And that's why the China is saying this U.S. created this. Okay, the military probably involved some way, one or another, that kind of crap. So all these conspiracy might be coming around, you know, blaming each other. But at the end of the day is... Um, people around the, the you know around the world, governments and so forth, you know, have shown like Second World War how some government will use you know virus to test people's body. You know, look at the death camp in Germany, and um, I mean, Japanese have done that a lot to to these captives in Southeast Asia. During Second World War, it's not talked much enough uh, to me. Not as you know, as prominent as the the Germany, you know, gas chamber and stuff to the Jews, but people, human beings, to do silly stuff like that. And government, you know, they I'm sure they they have some hidden you know department to actually look into those and say you know those. Uh, very dangerous viruses, how do they, you know, keep preventing it to spreading? And what happens if it's emerged and, you know, come together and perform other stuff? And then, you know, how, how to handle it, understand that. But out of that also military-wise, you can use that in Dharma to, you know, in China and just spread all this disease. Or North Korea and, and just say it's act of God. Who knows all this stuff actually ha- happening. But if the conspiracy theorists is actually say it is true or there's some weight on of it is is true. It does make you think. You know, they're blaming each other. Behind the scene they're not telling you the whole truth. The the media just reporting all this stuff. The government don't tell you the truth. The media don't tell you all the truth. It's up to you guys to actually think, you know, what what you think the truth is, you know. And and for we've seen um also China have, you know, um, issue with Taiwan, uh, also Hong Kong. And uh, U.S. and the West keep on saying how bad it is, blah, blah, blah. I mean, did the British give Hong Kong people the right to vote when it's under British rule? No, not until 1997. And this Martin Lee, you know, uh, uh, lawyer, a lawyer from Hong Kong, has been, you know, talking to the U.S. for a long time to ask, you know, them to help them to talk to the, the British government to give them more votes, more rights. Now they they forget about all this stuff and say you know Martin now talked to U.S. and the British government to force China to give them more rights. What's the difference? And now China uh, has been blamed for all this stuff, you know, not suppression and stuff, which they've done before anyway, but a lot more now because you know American and British got involved. It's okay to do it to China now. So it's not okay, you know, when, when Hong Kong is under British rule. I live there. I used to live there. I know how bad it is. I keep track of those news. It's not talking enough in the West. So all this hypocrites talking, just being silly. China, yes, has its own problem. It's not great, you know, in political front, especially. But so is Singapore. Look at the, minute, um, the politics. More or less like one one group of people, you know, do doing his stuff. But he was singing about the people, people in Singapore. You know, they give him good job, good health care, good education, good accommodation. You know, and prosper, prospect, so to speak, and running the country really well. Yeah, they locked down on you know not having a lot of um, competition about. 
people you can choose to vote for for the government and also knock down on what you actually can say about against the government just like Thailand you say anything against the king you get kicked you get locked in but every country of its own skeleton uh, in the closet so to speak and their own way of life for Americans going around the world to plea, preaching everybody what they should do and then don't you know look after their own problems a bit you know too much to me for me sometime at a time and yeah china is not blameless but it, it has its own problem and it's have to own you know development you have to grow it up by itself and um but all this was basically just reflecting you know how american politics at the moment is quite bad you know pulling fingers to somebody else you know just so that divert the the attention to the incompetence of Don, uh, Donald Trump's handling of the virus of the pandemic situation okay and of course you want to be you know be re-elected but now it's basically say China doesn't want me to, to win well winning or not it's up to you mate as far as I'm concerned President Donald Trump you do things well for the people really do things for the people I'm sure Americans not dumb <laughs> they will vote you but look at how you handle things. You know, it's rather difficult for them to to trust you, I suppose. And um, I personally just hope, you know, I I personally believe whatever Donald Trump is saying or the government is saying is not the vast majority of people's view in America. Definitely not. I, I believe they are free people, freedom people. You know, freedom of speech, freedom of the right to carry arms and stuff. They they don't mind sharing the their views but you know you can work on your way I work on mine we just make money you know we can trade be peaceful you know work together that kind of thing I'm not I'm sure most Americans would do that so is Europeans it's only some factors of those countries uh, around the world that actually do that and wonder against China but basically if China is a very weak country and it's not challenging America anyway. You think the American and European care? Look at those, like, look at them. Do they care any of the African countries not doing well? Or the pandemic over there, how to spread? You say anything to them? There are hardly any news talking about those. I haven't seen any news or much news. Maybe hopefully they, they're better prepared. And um, in Africa, they, they're doing better than the rest of the world. But I'm sure for us, I've got no borders, <laughs> and you just go pass around. Doesn't matter if you're Chinese or you're American, European or blacks or Africans. Doesn't matter. Or Brazilian doesn't doesn't care. Australian they just pass around. And Australia also say too, China have to pay blah blah blah. Oh yeah, sure. Just just say China got fed up and say okay, fine. I am not buying from another country who are not friendly to me, who are not willing to work with me. Fine. So what happened to Europe? What happened to America? What happened to Australia? Okay, first of all, the um, tourists will come down. Okay, just not going to come over to all these countries who are not welcoming. Students, overseas students come down. Flights come down because they're not traveling over there. Buying saying things, let's say rice, food, pork bellies, and um, oils and stuff don't have to buy from any of these countries. Minerals don't have to. Just buy in Southeast Asia with friendly, and work with the Southeast Asians and Africans and other countries willing to work with and work with Russia. So fine, you can continue to do that. Then who's going to lose out more? And also, if it's more closed store, then you know the manufacturing capabilities that you know be moved by the European countries, by the American country, uh, co government to China, have to move to Southeast Asia, it costs a bit more. Moving back to your own respective country, the cost of producing a unit or product will cost more. And besides, if China, we don't want to play bad games, you know, the Americans want to start a war, China got nuclear equipment too, China knows how to hack, I'm sure they do. Not just American thing, they got their drones too. 
they're probably less, much less capable than American. But they're not gonna lie down and just let American kill them what to do, is it? You know, they worry about dirty bombs and stuff from you know, some Middle Eastern countries or something. China can do just as much uh, as much and probably more. And then what? Everybody was get really scared and blame everybody. It all start off because some higher avalanche or elite people blaming each other and um I mean, friction happens. Uh, it can start work quite easily in all of us, the small little people, the average people, taxpayer, suffers. It's not fun. It's definitely not fun at all. I mean, let's let's make friends. Let's make money. Make love. Be friendly. Help each other. Spare the world. All this globalization is helping a lot of people around the world. Let's continue. Everybody make money. Everybody have a better living standard. Work together. Deal with big things. Economy, the environment. All the rubbish that we do, created. Not just on Earth, but also in space. And how do we can, you know, continue to regrow the plants and stuff so they can, you know, and fish and animals so we can, you know, have, us, have, us, we have it all cycle properly so that, you know, it's sustainable. Those kind of things than pointing the guns to each other. And the other things I want to talk about here is, which is on the, uh, basically the title of this, of this week's podcast is the CDC report. Okay, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention actually came out uh, with a report. And uh, I didn't know this until I was looking at some uh, Asian YouTube channels that brought this up. And it's quite, quite good that... CDC is basically pointing fingers. Donald Trump said, you know, well, two fingers up his up his nose to say whatever you said about the spread of pandemic and stuff is f- not quite correct. And basically, if I will including the link to this report in today's podcast, and you go and read, and basically you look under um, travel and COVID nineteen spread, and that section is basically said, you know. Yeah, Americans have stopped Chinese coming, you know, from um, traveling into the U.S. from Wuhan or Hubei or from China in general early on. But they forgot to mention, Donald, President Donald Trump forgot to mention, it didn't stop any other people coming in from China. They'll say they're not Chinese origin. Okay, they come in, they're Europeans. They come in. And the other thing is they still let Europe in coming in at a time when they stop, you know, try to stop Chinese to coming in. Okay, but like I said before in my previous podcast, because of, you know, some people are carrying the disease and not showing any symptoms. It could be anybody. It could be the Chinese. It could be Europeans. You know, China is, is much more metropolitan just as U.S. Okay, they got a lot of foreigners working there. And it's because it's Chinese New Year coming up, people start planning to go early, you know, go home early and spread it through planes, mainly planes, you know, go around the world. I think that's how Europe got it. But because some people are carrying the disease, not showing symptoms, going through the airport, no problem, and slowly spread that around. When they lock down, you know, in China and stop people coming in from China, from the U.S. point of view, have they stopped the Europeans? No, I'm doing quite later on. And even then, they were talking about oh, not stopping uh, uh, Ireland and UK first until the European countries moan about it. Okay, and also if you look at this this uh, report, it also said something very fundamental. Okay, and basically they are saying you know the type of um, when they was t- testing the the type of virus that's in around in uh, in US, they found some from China, but mostly from Europe and some also already there in the US. And that's from CDC themselves, an American government organization saying this. Now, also similar thing has been talked about in Cambridge in U- UK. They say the study, there's probably three strains. One strain affects the, uh, the Asian country, or probably origin from China. Another one seems to have mutated into another strain affecting Europeans. And the third strain is in US. Three slightly different strains. 
it's all men go out. And all just say China is at fault. I mean, just make you think, where, where the hell do those European strains and uh, US strains come from? It's all from China? Is it, really? I don't know, they probably related. But, you know, how fast you see the, the viruses mutated. That's what virus does, and with mutation. But it does lend some hands to the conspiracy theories that say, you know, those COVID virus has already been in America some time before. And maybe as well as in Europe before. And then to exclusively just point a finger to the Chinese, is it fair? And yet not to say the CDC is rebuilding Donald Trump's figure, whatever Donald Trump says. So interact, internally, governments are fighting each other. Because, I suppose, Donald Trump is saying something that's misleading, it's not correct, and then the other government department basically say, no, that's not the case, but also show you the infightings of whatever Donald Trump is facing. It's very much like a dining man action. It's not doing him much good. And, uh, yeah, that that's what I'm saying. This, this week is quite fun to you know, look at the market as well as learning about geopolitics and stuff, how they affect the market, how, you know, BS flying around everywhere between different countries and keep on saying China is bad, China is bad. Yes, take that to the bank. They're not coming out with right information. Yes, they're a communist country. And what are you guys going to do about, about it in the West? You know, this is not new. You, of course, do some pre- pre- presentation about, you know, the, all this all this information coming from China and work around the clock and just get ready for, you know, virus coming over. But from what we've seen so far is Europeans, the West is well, badly prepared, very much saying this is Asian things, it's Chinese things, you know, it's not in, at my door. It won't come to me. It will die when the weather gets hotter. Did it? I don't know. We just have to wait and see. But definitely, I mean, Indians got it. Get it. Africans got it. You know, Australian got it. Singapore got it. In those are hot weather countries. Did the virus gone? They are there. We just have to wait and see, and uh, what will happen. But also, the all this open up about the economy in U.S. and European countries and the. Uh, financial industry or the financial media I think there will be a free ship I think that is silly as far as I'm concerned it's very much we are in a bear market and just a big you know a rebound at the moment and uh, a lot more to come basically that's enough of my rant for this week and uh, coming up next is my normal weekly update of my sample uh, portfolio coming up next Okay, first off the bat is Apple. Okay, so short term wise is still a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. Amazon, well, the Thursday uh, after hours figures come out and spook the market a bit by you know saying they spend uh, the, that you know, first quarter or second quarter's money or this uh, profit into. Uh, send up equipment for you know protective gears and test centers and stuff and we may not make the you know next quarter projections and stuff spook the market so short term wise is a sell medium term still a buy so it's long term so uh with american uh economy or the stock market you know um go show its weakness by you know amazon coming down i don't know yet but i definitely watch um, uh, amazon but also apple as well just wait and see how it goes this seemed to bleed, you know, last time when the American uh, um, index indices going up. So we we'll see how it goes when they're coming down. Next is uh, Australian dollars against US dollars. Short term is a buy, still buy like last week. Medium long term is neutral. Burn crude, um, short term, long term, medium term, or sell. Uh, WTI crude oil now for the last, yeah, last week or so. Um, price, I mean, moving back up from around $14 back to like 20-ish, or 20. So short term is now a buy, the flag of change. Medium and long term is still a sell. DAX in Europe, um, basically um, long term is now changed to neutral. Medium term is 
neutral as before. Short term is a buy. So short term is a buy. Medium term is neutral. Long term is now changed to neutral as well. And Dow Jones. Long term is a buy. Medium term is neutral. Short term is neutral as well. Uh, long term is neutral. So short term is a buy. Medium term is neutral. Long term is neutral. For C100 and UK, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is still a buy. Gold, long term, oh, sorry, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is still a buy. Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong, short term in, is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is now neutral. Nasdaq, Nasdaq in America, short term is a buy. Medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. Nikkei in Japan, short term is a buy, medium and long term is neutral now. So special long term is changed flag to neutral. Silver, short term is still a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is still a sell. No surprise here. US dollar against the Chinese yuan basically is buy across the board still. So uh, even though the American dollar have come down a bit, the Chinese economy is still not doing that well and of course the currency against US dollar is still weaker so it's a buy basically you know you get a lot more bugs for your for your Chinese yuan in China at the moment US dollar against Japanese yen short term is a sell medium is neutral long term is a sell now this has been a uh, sell for the last two three weeks now so does that mean slowly people are you know buying more um, Japanese dollars or Japanese yen because they know they worry about the all this rebounds of the market getting ready for you know safe haven kind of buying purchases just in case you know things gone bananas in the stock market coming up soon I don't know we just have to wait and see but certainly it smells like it next is uh, British pound against Japanese yen uh, short term is a buy medium term is neutral long term is a sell after that is British pound against US dollar uh, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is also neutral now. So that's British pound against the US dollars. Bitcoin, long term is a buy now. It's changed. So short term has been buy for the past couple of weeks. Medium term is neutral for the past couple of weeks now. Long term is also buy last few days. So it seems to be slowly coming up now. Now there's seen some city talks now. People talk about go the the Bitcoin going back up to like ten thousand kind of thing. I don't know, it's just cross over seven thousand. Some of them talk about, you know, twenty thousand something. We just have to wait and see. Um then last but not least is LTL, the the iShare tracking the long term uh US bond uh, government bond is a ETF. Same as last week, short term is a buy, medium term is neutral, long term is a buy. So it's not much changes there. But what I what I have to say is slowly but surely I think this rebound I uh, said a couple of weeks ago it got legs, it continued rebound around the world in the indexes and shares. But as the economy around the world, you know, under lockdown slowly emerging, I think people start to realise, you know, it's not a full blown people go straight back to work like for example for me. If I go back to work when I go back to work for the next two, three weeks or so I'm still working at the moment or on online, I mean remotely. Um, but actually go back to the office with the most slightly social distancing still happening. I think probably maybe up to half of the stuff, maybe even a third. I saw it's a third of people going to shop, maybe also doing a schedule. So you know, I show up this week, I don't show up next week, that kind of thing. And so to keep that distancing. So most people going back to the office will see a much more more spaces, you know, around the place. And that affect traveling, affect, I don't know, food, you know, canteen and stuff. You know, people might be coming out from another country to go, or not even another country, can't even come travel around. Um, the hotels, you know, some contractor coming into work, you know, would they still be able to go to the hotel? I don't know. They probably have to work remotely. So those, it's a lot of ifs. And that's just for telecom industry. And most likely a lot of people, if they can afford to, do remote work and still being uh, productive, they probably continue that mode. And also make you think then, do we actually need all this commercial real estate, the properties, this house, all this stuff? I mean, that's just my industry. What about others' industry?
if they uh, using Zoom or WebEx or something can do their work and use the internet and you know, send files back and forth and emails. What's the point of having a large um, building that you don't own, for example, and you have to still pay the landlords, to the commercial landlords? It's got to be suffer. Now, I'm looking into you know the effect at the moment of all these uh, lockdowns and uh, you know travel restriction around the world to different industry. I'm looking in the hours at the moment. I'll probably share with you in the next couple of weeks or so. But you know, one thing I'm definitely looking at because I'm into properties. Two things: Airbnb is dead, more or less. You know, I think it's tried to have an IPO in March. Sometimes got killed. It's not been talked about much. I'm seeing it actually on BBC News, maybe on on some American news. It's reported it. Um, basically, you know, Air, Airbnb, and um, basically, it initial ideas very good. You know, rent out your spare room, rent out your house, or when you are not around to other people traveling to your country, so you earn some money while you're on holiday and cover at least your, you know, some food and traveling, maybe the whole expense for your tra- for your holidays, and also give people, you know, you have spare room to make some money for short term. You know, just like acting like a extension of a mini hotel so to speak but now with the pandemic the international traveling restriction and also local country own restriction who's gonna come out the Airbnb that whole concept's gone now we've especially last five years or so a lot of companies the UK as well as US felt things say hey rent out your house on Airbnb is better than Rent your students or professional because the short term rent is so vibrant and you earn a lot more money out of it. There are courses out there actually teaching people how to do those. And um, nobody then and then think of or worry about pandemic that can happen or even a chemical problems or something, you know. Um, what they worry about the, the, the Muslims or nothing against Muslim, but just, just a lot of American. Uh, media keep on saying the possibility of you know somebody from Middle East got a dirty bomb and just detonated in in Trafalgar Square in UK or maybe somewhere in Europe, uh, in America New York for example. What does that mean? You know, well, if that happened, that's more localized to maybe London and New York area, but not the whole country lockdown, N- not international all at the same time. So Airbnb, the whole model is crumbled. I wonder how it works. I know mean, it's, it's it's a private company still haven't got IPO yet, but I don't know how they hold up. And to landlords, I mean, I'm still in the student accommodation. Um, uh, thankfully, because they're locked in for twelve months, fine, you know. But a lot of my uh, um, homes that's rented out to families because of lockdown, they cannot pay the rent. Some of them only pay half or you know a third or something. And it's been delayed and delayed. I'm doing my best to help them, but you know I got bills to pay too. And uh, what does that mean? That's just residential, you know, buy to let and stuff. And then the commercial side, when people come out from this lockdown, I very much doubt they would like to have. You know, people will start to think, especially on the financial side, to start thinking: Do I need to keep this big, large building to house all these people now that? We prove that it's viable to do remote work so long as if they come up with a process, a system to keep travel people actually doing work. I, I'm telling you this. It's my own experience, just like everybody else has been telling me as well. You will work remotely work from home. Effectively, I think if you keep keep travel on things, you get a lot more productive than actually traveling to a place to work and work nine to five and coming back because you save your couple of hours your your driving. You can basically, you know, do a lot more work and work being work. Some of us, a lot of us are workaholic. We spend a lot more hours working in the evening, you know, catch up and stuff. And But also a good lifestyle choice. You know, like for myself, I got four kids. They're running around during the day. You know, everybody locked down. You know, I got a bit, you know, sidetracked, so to speak. But in the evening, when they go to sleep, I can catch up and work. So it's this good balance. I'm still productive just as before and uh but i also got that balance now you know to help out in the house you know doing stuff in the house with the kids your wife and then do other things then you know catch up my work as well so if there's suddenly i need to go buy some food because my wife don't want to go and i might sort of you know going out just you know, reduce the risk so to speak 
I can go middle of the day, buy some food, and come back and catch up my work a bit later on in the evening. So long as I, I tell my manager and you know, if I got problem, my hands up, you know, and catch up in the evening and the weekend, that, that's fine. And a lot of people would probably do that, and that sort of make I would if I'm on holding the purse string, just think, hmm, if I spend a bit more on the technology, so Azure and AWS, those kind of remote working thing, will help teams, you know, Microsoft and Teams and stuff. That's what I use. Definitely will help. And so you look at Microsoft, is you know coming staying up is good. And so it's AWS, you know, Amazon staying up there is is good. And Zoom, yeah, probably WebEx as well. Those kind of thing, online purchasing and I'm buying and delivery. You know, I use a lot more delivery from um, Sainsbury's, your local supermarket, as well as food delivery. Um, yeah, those those economies good. But uh, on the other hand, it's crap for Airbnb, crap for Uber. You know, the, all this taxi sharing and driving and, and stuff is actually killing it. Uh, and some of my tenants actually are taxi driver in the UK, and uh, yeah, they just having a very tough time. They now become a delivery man, delivery man, delivering food around just to uh, keep keep you know, food on the table, so to speak. And so, so that's basically my two cents worth for this week. But it it does open up a lot of areas I can think of that you think really the stock market or the um, commentator and uh, the financial news say, oh, well, let's hope a you uh, fee ship we bound. Now nah, it's gonna be a very slow, painful round back up to pre-pandemic level, and you have the spat with China and U.S. still going on now. U.S. pointing more fingers to China. China can be simple say it. a lot of Chinese already saying it. You know, if U.S. are doing this, don't buy American products. They haven't done it mass yet, but there are people rumbling about it already. And don't come to UK to study. Don't buy UK goods, luxury goods and stuff. What does that mean? So if if US and America continue to do that, I hope it's just a short-term thing, especially in America, just because of the election. But how are they going to you know, patch up the damages? Are they going to shake hands with Chinese after that? So one minute saying they're bad boys, next minute, I need your money, come over. And I buy my stuff or just force you. I don't know. Will the Chinese just go say, yeah, I just do whatever you say? No, I don't think so. So that, what happened to the Chinese-American relationship? Or the UK and China relationship? So if the politicians want to push that way, um, it's going to be a lot more worse for the economy and to actually have think that the economy just bounce back very quickly, you know, big fish ship back to before nah I don't think so just but this is my logical thinking but as a trend follower you don't really care do you I mean this is why I keep on saying I'm a fundamentally internally first in the core is trend following because of the methodology of the systems step by step logical step thinking but uh, to have um, what you call the um, fundamental on top it definitely helps too so we just have to basically wait and see. So from a trend following point of view, I'm going to push and get as much money from the market as I can. But like trend following, I said before, I will never get up from the top. I never get in from the bottom. So I'm going to just take the meat in the middle of the of, of the trend. And uh, at the moment, yeah, I'm along and making good money. Just like last time when I said you got you know turn yourself up upside down from long to under short. I think similar things going to happen. So watch out for the next couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, when people start coming out around the world back to work and we see the type of you know things that they're actually doing. The stock market probably will adjust and they start seeing, okay, this fish thinking probably not going to happen much and slowly you know go sideways minimum, I expect. Maybe coming down a bit more, a bit more, especially with this rhetoric coming up between US and China. And oil price probably going back up again. Because, you know, using mouth, worse of mouth, threats of possible wars, you know, drive the price of our crude oil back up. And it might do the way the American government or politicians are doing to help try to help save the oil and gas industry in America. Who knows? But as far as I'm concerned, there, there is possibility of a, a good possibility, my, my feeling is, that, you know, we probably haven't seen the last of the bear market yet this is a bear we bound it probably rebound up to the way that people you know probably be, be more i don't 
I won't be surprised if this, you know, trend continue to get a bit more legs, so to speak, until everybody say, yeah, the good times are back, and then boom, suddenly something else happen. Maybe some sort of disaster. Maybe Donald Trump say, yeah, I'm gonna send some warship to Southeast China Sea to do something, which I think they are already doing something anyway. But you know, make a big fuss out of it. Oil price gone up. The whole economy gone down again because you know, possible war. You know. When during wartime, the stock market going down, oil price gone up, right? Until war breaks happens, oil price stabilize, and then the economy, you know, um, uh, stabilize as well, and the uh, and the stock market go up again. But you never know what Mr. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, might do. I don't know, or totally out of whack from, you know, from nowhere. You know, um, Russia and Saudi having a spat and uh, affecting the world. You know, who who knows? North Korea might do something stupid, or there's another virus coming, totally different from COVID nineteen. This time from Europe, maybe I don't know, or maybe again from China. What happened? Uh, this is a type of thing, black swan event, ladies and gentlemen. If you really are a trader, you need a trend following trader. You need to be wary. One, you know, one eye keeping in the back. Just to make sure that when some bad things happen, how much will affect you? How quickly can you turn around? You know this ego thing about thinking the market always just do a visual rebound. BS to me. This ego. If you are trading, don't have ego. Don't marry your position. And if the market turn, get out. And uh, I think something similar gonna happen. Just like uh, end of February, early March, the market suddenly turn. I lose some money, and uh, probably over more my estimate. But if I follow my trend following system, and when the signal turn, I turn. I'm sure I will make the back up just like what happened to me last couple of weeks, and now I'm in the money again. Okay, so making good money on the way down, making good money on the way up, lose something in the in in the top, in the bottom, you know, earn the money in between. That's the way trend following is. But you know, watch out your risk. Don't risk too much. Just like one buffer said, you know. Rule number one: Stop losing money. Don't lose money. Rule number two: Follow rule number one. The 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 emphasis here for trend following is if you don't have money. I think um, Larry Hyde uh, actually said that rightly. If you don't have money, you cannot bet. You can bet, you cannot you know follow the market. And and when the when the eventuality of the upturn comes or you know the market go in your favor, you're not there to take advantage of it. So make sure watch your backside, watch your risk. Look at some option, maybe some other way to, you know, I tweeted recently about from um, Michael Covell uh, about um, Mike Denver or whatever his name is, talking about possible, you know, buying option to cover your asses and stuff. Listen to that tweet, um, that that link to Michael Covell. I think it's 862 or something. And that really, I retweeted, got implication and thinking, you know, behind it. Watch out your backside. Don't think every time it's always rosy. And don't think everything recovered, which I don't believe at all. Bear market normally for the last 12 to 18 months. We've got such a long time. You know, we've got 10, 11 years of a bull market. Who are not to say, you know, I love four years. Four years bear market. Why not? Why have always good time? Bear market can last longer than 18 months, two years. Who knows if that happens? Are you prepared? What are you going to do about it? That's the main question. Don't worry about what everybody does. Worry about what you're going to do. That's essentially trend following. Okay? And also, uh, any any trading methodology. Don't worry about what other people say. What are you going to do in this market climate? And get yourself prepared. So, you know, go go on that tweet and listen to, to the podcast. I think definitely beneficial to you. And... Basically, that's the end of my podcast for this week, and I speak to you next week. Keep safe and stay healthy. I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.